Okay, here we're looking on the inside of the skeleton. This is where the doubler and the rear of the uh, middle rib meet up. When I had the skin drawn down to this and I was match drilling the skin to the rib, you can see the holes up here where this was, where the rivets are gonna go. This is material here is made of 16 thousandths and I don't know if you can see it quite very well in here or not, but the corner of it here is bent down. What happened with this? When you're drilling down with the uh, drill bit, um, once it gets through the 40 thousandths here, it wants to push the 16 thousandths out of the way because there's nothing holding counter pressure on the back side of it when you're drilling through the skin. So a good way to do that uh, if this happens to you, it doesn't happen all the time, it only happens sometimes, but you got to be careful because you don't want to be bending that material back and forth too many times. But what you can do is once you've got the skin back off of it, you can clamp this and then drill down through the original hole right here. Just clamp it good and tight and then go ahead and match drill that piece of the flange. On the 25 thousandths tip ribs, that doesn't happen. It only happens on the back corners of these um, ribs, these 16 thousandths ribs. So um, you've just got to be very careful that you don't do that. And you want to make sure that you've got everything clamped properly so that the rib doesn't move back and forth uh, once you match drill. Now this one here, pretty much match drilled just fine. But even the front side over here wasn't, wasn't perfect. This one here bent out of the way. So I'm, what I'm going to do is going to bend those flanges back into position Go ahead and re-drill with the, 40, the number 40 bit and uh, get them all so that they're clamped into position and re-drilled properly so that those flanges aren't bent. Uh, that happens uh, if you've already built your rudder. That'll happen when you do your rudder. It happens in a couple different places, so you just kind of have to be careful about that. You could cut a wood block spacer to put in there and click go right down. When you, when you drill your rear rib, you click go right into those wood blocks and that will prevent that from happening. It'll hold that flange up for drilling, but it's really up to you how you want to address those, but that's just another concern you're gonna have with these lightweight flanges on these 16 thousandths ribs. So anyway, we'll be back for more skinning. All right guys, while I've pressed out the uh, kinks with the spoon as best I can, I actually ended up putting another one in it uh, the other night when I was uh, showing a buddy and uh, Got a little careless again and, and was just showing a little bit of curvature in here. And because I wasn't being careful, of course, I put another smiley in it. So I pulled the whole thing off. I deburred it. Uh, deburred all the rivet holes on the other side. Deburred the skeleton where the rivet holes for the skin were. Um, pressed out the smiley. And <clears throat> reattached it. And now I'm getting ready to ratchet strap these down. So when you use the ratchet straps, you can't use them like you would a normal uh, set of cargo straps where you put the two hooks together and then just draw them tight. You actually have to do uh, double feed with the uh, single end. So what I did is I fed the free end that doesn't have a hook on it up, up through the slot here. And uh, so that's this part. Let's see if I can back up enough. So that's this part here, and that goes up and through the slot and then comes back down. So it goes around the axle of the clamp, goes down around the bottom side, up around the skin, and back down through the slot behind it, behind where the one with the hook is, and the free end is down here. And that allows you to ratchet with just this up against a couple of 2x4s that I'm going to rest up against here. If you use the, uh, the hooks and try to just draw those together, uh, you're going to end up damaging the skin or having to put some other kind of fixture in here. So what I'm going to make sure I have to do when I ratchet this down, and remember I did this backwards, you don't want to start with the curved surface like I did, but I've got to make sure that there's a slight uh, tension radius all the way down this skin. And you can see in the middle here, it's it's kind of uh, resisting that almost like a piece of wrapping paper uh, when you're wrapping presents and you you can't you can't get it to fold right because it's got a it's got a crease in it or a, a wave in it that won't let you fold it so uh, sheet metal kind of does the same thing and uh, right down there in the middle you can see where it sort of bulges out there and that if I was to just try to grab this and bend it over it would it would put another smiley in that's why it happened the first time 
So I'm going to, to get it started, uh, take my straight edge, my 12 foot straight edge, and clamp it to it so that everything's straight. And then I'm going to, um, with a friend, kind of push that tension radius into it all the way down until I make sure I've got some cur uh, curvature to it. And then I can start ratcheting these down. These ratchets aren't going to eat up all this material all the way. I mean, it's a ton of material that's going to come, you know, slacking up as we do this. So uh, what I'll probably do is take, just to get the skin down close, I'll probably do three of them and then slip tighten these uh, down and then uh, loosen the other ones back up, hold some, some clamping tension down on it, loosen the ones that are going to get bound up on it, slip tighten those all the way down again, and that'll give me plenty of room to ratchet around that axle without bunching up too much material because eventually you run out of room to ratchet just because the, the ratchet can't hold all the, the slack that you have in there. So I'll have to do it in stages. And I'm going to try to uh, film that for you as well. But I've got a couple of friends that are helping, and I'm not sure if they're going to want to be on my YouTube channel. So <laughs> we'll see. But anyway, so all right, right now I've got six straps. I might put a seventh on there. I've actually got 12 of these things laying around. Um, so I've got plenty to do the wings. Uh, if there's any ratcheting that needs to go on there, I'm not sure that there is. But i got plenty of these just in case. And uh, they they were cheap. They were like six ninety nine for a four pack at Harbor Freight on with a coupon. And so I bought like three packs of them just to make sure I had enough of them. So they're cheap enough to have a ton of them laying around. But uh, this is the start of uh, ratcheting down this skin. I hope it goes well, despite the fact that I had the skin attached on the wrong side first. And we'll just see. I may have to slip a two by four underneath where that radius is to get it to compress around the nose ribs first before I start drawing it tight. But We'll give it a shot and uh, see what we come up with. Okay guys, so by clamping that uh, straight edge to the long edge here, um, once I kind of, I didn't even need a second hand for that. Once I put this, uh, once I put this under tension a little bit, it basically wanted to just fold all by itself. You can see, this just wanted to curve all the way down by itself. I barely even had to tighten it. So or I didn't have to put any pressure on it really whatsoever. I don't know if I can show you the detail either real well from this side, but you see how this is drawn up all by itself? I'm confident that's gonna draw tight when I ratchet the edges down. And you can, if you look closely, you can see a little bit of where those smileys were. Right here. There's one right there. That little deformation, you can barely see it in the camera. Now that the uh, nose radius is under tension, you can hardly see those blemishes. They're still there, and they're still visible if you look hard enough, but they're, they're not bad at all. The worst one actually is right there, and I've just got to do a little bit of touch up on that one. I actually uh, bumped that when I was setting this up, so, uh, so this drew down nice and tight, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, take these and just slip tighten them, meaning I'm not going to use the ratchet to tighten them up as far as I can. I've got to put a ten foot two, uh, set of 10 foot 2x4s in behind them to protect the edge of the skin here. So there'll be a 2 by 4 running, two 2x4s two running lengthwise that way. And then that'll give this ratchet a surface to sit on without um, crimping the edges because there's some overhang here that you want. Um, and uh, we don't want that to crimp up or down when we start ratcheting tight. So what I'll do is I'll take the bulk of the slack out of all that and I'll pull, of course, the uh, straight edge and everything out of there and get the clamps off of it um, and then finish ratcheting it down tight. Hopefully we'll have some good progress here in a minute. Okay, so you can see I've got two 10-foot 2x4s, which gives about a 9-inch overhang on each side, maybe an 8-inch overhang on each side. Um, turned... Uh, horizontally in, in the same plane as the stabilizer. If you turn them 90 degrees up like this and just use one, uh, they won't fit between the Clecos, at least not the way that I've drilled them. And uh, since you've got an extra, you know, this way is three inches, but this way is three and a half inches, there's no way that that would fit in between the Clecos there. That's almost the entire width of the spar. So I'm using two so that I've got plenty of material here to really ratchet down on and it and it shallows up it gives a nice shallow angle here 
so the overhang isn't going to actually crimp when you ratchet these down. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the slack out and uh, get most of these ratcheted out. Then I'll pull the straight edge out of there and see where we end up there. All right, guys, I got this ratcheted down as tight as I can get it. Now you can see why you don't want to start with the bottom end first down here <laughs> because those ratchet straps can't pull tight enough to flatten this out. Uh, they do a much better job of tightening across a radius like this. So the way that I'm going to have to compensate for that is when I first start drilling this, I'm essentially going to have to uh, hold it flat and then kind of clico as I go this direction towards the overhang. And it shouldn't really be too much of a problem. I mean, I've, I've had some experience with stuff like this before, so it, it should be okay. The biggest issue I'm going to have to worry about is whether there's going to be any sort of twist along the length of the uh, stabilizer. Uh, right now I've just got it rocking back and forth on some of the square tubing and uh, it's suspended between two points which means it's going to be that are it's actually those two uh, middle tubes there are what I'm going to actually hang it off of to keep it as even as possible. Just kind of center them at every third lengthwise. And that'll keep the weight distribution quite centered across those two points. And uh, what that'll do is help prevent introducing a bow or any kind of a twist in the center. Um, you want to level your table as much as possible. And I've got leveling feet for the table and everything else, but um, they're, they're still, it's just impossible to get it perfectly flat. So if you look all along the nose radius here, with a couple of minor little exceptions that I actually did when I was trying to kind of hand squeeze this down. You can see there's a there's a slight divot there, and there's another one over there by that second ratchet strap. I'll press those out with a spoon, but you can see I've got this tight enough that the nose rib is actually starting to push through here. That's where the nose rib is. So it's plenty tight. I don't want to go any tighter. You can see uh, the nose rib is pushing through here. And I think the one, I think the strap is right on that one there. So we actually have to do this twice. And the reason is because we're not starting with a pre-drilled skin. So now that I know that the skin is the right size with a 15 millimeter overhang here, once this is pushed down flat like that, when I push this all the way down flat, I end up with the proper 15 millimeter overhang there. What I have to do now is mark this where the 15 millimeter overhang is then mark the center of the spar location and then take the skin off, completely off of the uh, stabilizer. And I could probably get away with rigging up something to hold it with the other side of it on, but I'm not gonna mess around with that. It's only 30 Clecos or probably not even 20 Clecos. So I'm not even gonna dink around with that. I'm gonna take it completely off, mark the lines, rivet lines and rivet locations and rib stations for uh, the top part of the skin, pre-drill that with A3 holes, and then lay the skin back down, clico it back to the uh, bottom uh, side of the stabilizer, do this whole operation again, and then match drill it once I've made sure that there's no twist or anything in there. So uh, one of the things that I got, you got to be careful about is there's a very little edge material on these nose, the very tip, or the tips of these uh, tip ribs. And the strap here kind of got a little off center when I was trying to tighten it down. And what it did is it actually popped the rib this way and the nose, so the rib went out like that and the skin kind of crunched down in into the uh, radius of the nose. Now, fortunately, it didn't go very far. It didn't really do any damage. There's a slight little lip here that I kind of have to f uh, form flat, but don't want to get too overzealous on these end ribs. And you can see that it just doesn't want to doesn't want to bend flat. So again, what I'll end up doing is kind of starting my drill pattern in the center and then working my way both towards the overhang and towards the outside. And what that'll do is if there's any wave in that material as I'm, as I'm drilling and clecoing in succession, it'll have a tendency to push the slack out towards these corners here, uh, helping to eliminate that. And by the time I get to the very end of it, it should be, should be nice and and uh, nice and smooth and flat again as long as I don't have any twist in the skeleton when I start that operation so this part was strictly just to confirm that the skin was the right size and that I had enough overhang um, 
I, I made it exactly right to the drawings as far as the skin template was concerned and now I realize that because because it's laid out pretty much exactly right or that my you know my ribs were all the right size and my spar was the right size so the skin laid out exactly the way that it was supposed to with a 15 millimeter overhang on the top and the bottom of the rear of the rear spar and that means that everything is dimensioned correctly including the ribs the spar the doublers everything put together the way that it was supposed to to end up with this uh, skin being exactly right so I'm pretty stoked about that and uh, we will uh, take this all apart, lay out the top holes, pre-drill, and get it going. That's all for this video. Be sure to like, comment, or subscribe, and let me know if you have any requests for future video content. As always, thanks for watching, and good luck with your projects.